Hello, everyone. Today, I want to take you on a time travel, a time travel through our lifetime. I will begin where it all started for me. That is pretty much 30 years ago. From there on, I'll spend some time in our time today, where we are and where technology has taken us. And once we truly know where we are, we can have a look into the future. So let's start. That is me, 18 months old. I was already in love with these computers. That is a MS-DOS computer, and I probably must have just learned to speak by then. 18 months is a short time. Every 18 months, the power of computers doubles. Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel, said that in 1965. And you know what? It happened. It worked out. And in the next two examples, I would like you to show where that has taken us today. You know the internet, you know smartphones, but I wonder if you know also computer games. That was one I loved to play when I was 15. It's called StarCraft. And this video you see here is one of the most interesting but also frightening videos I've seen in 2016. It was released only a month ago from Google DeepMind. Those are the guys that build artificial intelligence. And what they've done here is they've given the artificial intelligence an interface to see what the screen is doing. So these little dots here represent that stuff. And the computer is able to give back input via keyboard and mouse. The artificial intelligence is doing the same as we're using the computer. So I wonder where that is leading us to. Another example, I don't know if you like to play basketball. I'm not really into that, but in a few years from now, I could just put on some goggles, sit there, and enjoy what I'm really passionate about. And that is nature. This is actual footage shot through a le magic leap, and that will soon hit the market. And yeah, that's augmented reality and the computer coming into our life, or into our reality. But do you want to know what I'm truly passionate about? It's these guys here. It's 3D printers that can make something beautiful out of nothing. And that one is a really special one. Do you see these green parts? This printer has printed out these green parts itself and turned itself into a organ printer. That thing is able to place cells right exactly where you want them to have. And different cells can make up an organ. They're not yet there, but they've only started eight months ago. And there was about 20 students from LMU and TU Munich that built this machine. And then they took that machine to Boston to a very big synthetic biology competition. It's called iGEM. Three and a half thousand people from all over the world come together and when they present, presented this thing, they won the grand prize. There's more to it than only the 3D printer. Um, there's DNA that they engineered. Because, well, if you put cells together, you need to glue them together. So they have created a little bit of DNA information that on the outer side of the walls grabs the next cell to each other, and then they stick together. And yeah. That is genetic engineering and how you can put cells together. Synthetic biology. Synthetic biology is the engineering of cells. And you look at nature from an engineer's perspective. I hope you all know that every cell is made up of DNA. DNA, you have three billion letters in each of your cells. And that make up the blueprint of who you are and how it works and how your body is constructed. What we've done is we've created a wiki, a website where everybody can add knowledge. And you can get the interactive slides of this presentation if you simply send an empty email to tedxtum at synbio.info and you can read on about the stories I'll tell you. So if you want to truly understand nature, you start with reading DNA. These are reading machines. Each of them costs $1 million. But they're so efficient that 
you can actually order your DNA online for 169 euros. What can you do with that information? You could know what diseases you might get in the future. You might figure out where your ancestors are coming from, coming from, or you could learn if there's another cousin around that you haven't met yet. They have read more than a million people already. And, well, you have these big machines, but if you want to be mobile, you can just buy this USB stick. It costs about a thousand euros. You plug it into your computers, and a couple of hours later, you have the DNA on your computer. This is how far DNA technology has come. And we've spoken about exponential technologies, right? They double every time, every couple of months. And DNA reading was five times faster. Back in 2001, when I was playing StarCraft, those guys had figured out how to automatically read DNA for $100 million. But the story went on, and only this year, we have crossed the cost of $1,000 to read a whole human genome, 3,000 letters, and it's continuing to drop. So reading and learning from nature becomes ever cheaper and ever more accessible. But what do you do when you have this DNA? You can upload it to a website. That one is a startup from Tel Aviv. It's called Genome Compiler. And you open up the DNA information in your web browser. Right? <laughs> and then you can not only remove function, but you can also add function. You can just type G-A-A-T-T-C. And if you really know what you're doing, well, <laughs> you can change some microorganisms. At that point, I need to say, it takes many months to make that happen. And you need to know really what you're doing there because it's very complicated. But it's only very complicated today. In a couple of years from now, that will be standard. Today, we program computers. Everybody wants to be a programmer. And then, well, you can soon probably be a programmer of DNA. But what do you do once you have created your code and added a function to your organism? Well, you first need to print the DNA. This is a DNA printer. In these four glasses, A, C, G, T, you have the letters of the genetic code. And in this machine, they're assembled in the right direction, the right order. And today you can order online for 10 cents a base pair a printout of your DNA. And if you're in a hurry, you can even do same day delivery. <laughs> so you design, build, test. You design, build, test many thousand times actually, until you find something that truly works. And the next three examples I want to give you is what people have done already today with that technology. Bricks, we build houses. We build a lot of houses. In fact, we need 1.2 trillion bricks a year. And we need to heat each of them up for three days in a row at 2,000 degrees. Those guys from Biomason have developed a bacteria that you mix with sand and water, put it into the sun, and wait for five days, and your brick is done. Imagine how much energy and pollution we can save with technology like that. Then, do you know yeast? The stuff that makes your bread fluffy and your beer, well, puts the alcohol into it. It's a very versatile organism. Those guys here figured out how chicken are producing eggs, in particular egg white. And they found a way where they can put this genetic information from the chicken into the yeast. And now, you don't need billions of chickens anymore to produce egg white. That solves actually the chicken egg problem. Yeast is first. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's come to the last big example of where we are today. This is Layla. A year ago, she was diagnosed with leukemia, and there was not really anything that could help her. So she was chosen as the first patient to undergo a CAR-T immunotherapy, a gene therapy. It works like that. You genetically engineer cells of your own immune system to solely attack leukemia cells. You build these cells, and then there's one syringe. You get this one syringe, and the cells start attacking leukemia. A month later, there was no leukemia cell left in her body. That was the first clinical test. But imagine, this might be the beginning of a world where there's no more cancer. It's a couple of years from now that this will hit the market, but 
it's on their way and a lot of big pharma companies are putting a lot of research into that to make that happen very soon. Now, you know where we are today and that was fast, but the future will even move faster. I've chosen three examples to illustrate you where that could go and I wonder if you notice something particular about that one. There's four women on this picture. There's four women, two of them having kids together. A researcher found out that he can take DNA information from one female egg and put it into the other one, and then women can have kids together, their own kids. And he was approaching an artist and wondering how, how would society pick up a technology like that? Should we really do that? And the artist chose a beautiful example. She three, made 3D models of what the kids could look like and created these pictures and showed them to the parents and captured their emotional reaction to that in a beautiful video. And this is how artists can actually understand this technology and, and transport it into society and then ask the questions, should we do that or should we not? Where is that leading to? This, I think, could be happening by 2020. And then this topic, an ancient dream. It's been around for thousands of years. Longlivity is, well, you live for a very, very long time. You get rid of diseases. But it goes further. Imagine, you're in your 70s. You look back and say, well, that was an awesome life. I wish it could start all over again. There's a lot of people working on that. It's a complicated process, how we age, but people are trying to find ways how they can tell cells to reverse back. So at 75, you would take a gene therapy and your cells will come back to 25. Google has invested more than half a billion into technologies like that. And there's a couple of more tech companies of that size tackling that problem. And there are startups. The first one actually made the first human test in 2015. So that's well, where is that going to, right? We'll have a lot of people. In fact, if we look at the development of our humanity, when I was born, we were about 5 billion people, and we will witness 10 billion people, double as many people on Earth. Where should they all go to? And there's a billion problems we need to solve on the way until there. But there's one crazy guy, but we could just go to Mars, right? I'm sure you've heard all of Elon Musk's mission to go to Mars. He'll probably do that by 2033 or latest by 2048. And his life vision is to put one million people on Mars. But it's a desert up there. And I've met synthetic biologists that are already today trying to grab bacteria that is living at the bottom of the ocean and re-engineer them to work on Mars. And well, bacteria has done that before. They've created an atmosphere on Earth, maybe we can also do that on Mars. That is our future. A future I can well imagine to happen, and that's only 30 to 60 years ahead from us. But we should be working on that today. We should figure out where do we want to go? What should we not do? And we need to figure this out today. So now, here, and together. When I speak about us, it's Right now, the four of us, there's actually many more people around, but with the four of us, we're building a truly unique place. There's Philip, the guy to the left. Probably, yeah, 18 months ago, he was approached by three students. They were like, oh, have you heard of that idea, Hyperloop? And he was like, yeah, just build it. He opened up his network and, and spoke to thousands of people and brought them all together. And you see this thing there? 18 months later, we have a Hyperloop. 40 students have built that thing, and it's soon going to be shipped to the U.S. to be tested. Then there's Alex. Alex is about reaching singularity. Singularity is the moment when computers become more intelligent than human beings. And the question is, when will that happen? How will that happen? And what will happen then? Then there's Raphael. In Raphael's world, in some years from now, we can upload our brain 
But what do you do there in the cloud? You need a robot to be back on Earth. So he's building a humanoid robot. And then there's me working with synthetic biology and thinking about curing aging. So how do we do that? We take technologies, the latest technologies, we merge them, we recombine them and create something new. We need good people for that, people from all different backgrounds. And we bring them together in a truly transdisciplinary space. And with these three ingredients, we hope to build our future here. Let me show you that stuff. That is Roboid. It's a 3D printed humanoid robot. It took about nine months to construct this thing. And now there's 40 students as well that work on that one. Next year, he's going to learn to walk. And maybe in a few years from now, he'll turn from Roboid into Roman. <laughs> that one here, this is a whole laboratory on a chip. A whole biotechnology laboratory on a chip that's fully automated and can run hundreds of different um, experience experiments at the same time. These are just two of many other technologies we have in our labs. But how does it look like there? That, that's how we work there. It's a lot of chaos. But in that chaos, truly, ingenious ideas happen. The space is the Unternehmertum, the entrepreneurship center out there uh, in Garching. And well, in there, we've created labs. This is our two-month-old biohack space. We don't do biology yet there, but we're building lab machines. Next year, we hope to have a fully functional and safety-approved lab. Right in the same room, we construct Roboy. So we are very close to each other. We can ask questions just through the room and make new things happen. And of course, there's our virtual reality and artificial intelligence lab, where you can play with all these new technologies, build new applications, and yeah, live in whatever reality you want to be. So, I would love to invite you to join our community, both online on our websites, on our Slack communities, on our wiki, and offline in our meetups and in our lab spaces. We'd love you to learn and share whatever experiences and knowledge you have so that we can all together solve real problems. All I want you to do now is send a simple email to TEDx at symbioinfo. You'll get all the information, the dates, where we're going to meet, and many more things. Thank you.